So I want to start a little bit about my background and kind of, um, I think it's important. Um, oftentimes, one of the biggest lessons I'd say in my career has been when you see someone doing something you want to do or you see like a certain opportunity unfolding, oftentimes it's not saying, okay, how can I go do that thing? It's about maybe looking at the three steps back before that led to that opportunity, right? Um, so I'm going to start a few steps back before I became a product manager because I think it's a pretty important as, as a part of my story. So I grew up in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Oregon's a state that's right north of California, okay? Um, and uh, I'm the youngest of six kids. And um, growing up there, um, every summer I just had some childhood friends where we would just try random stuff for fun. And it really just started from uh, my mom and dad being like, hey, uh, we'll give you like five bucks if you put up Christmas lights, okay? Five bucks back then, a lot of money. I could ride my bike to like a, dare, like a local like 7-Eleven, get a candy bar, it's good stuff. Um, and uh, I remember thinking, hey, would it be possible for us to do this for other people? I didn't really know what I was doing, but I liked getting, I liked having money to spend for things, right? Um, and so one of the first businesses I actually started in high school back then was a business putting up Christmas lights. I went around door to door, I put on flyers, I knocked on people's doors. And the only way that I remembered that people had like sold stuff was I remember answering the door at my house. Someone would come up. I mean, sometimes they'd be selling you like religion and stuff, it doesn't matter what it was, but I remember that and I was like, oh, I can fly for stuff, right? So I did that, moved it around, and ended up doing that several years and getting a book of like 50, 60 houses, which was cool. Um, it turns out people don't like going on ladders. Which was interesting. Another thing that I did was a peanut butter and jelly delivery service for an apartment complex, uh, which was a fun, interesting experience delivering food, which I have now done a lot of in my time, um, which is kind of fun. I sold strawberries outside of a Costco. Um, I actually one time locked my keys out of my car, called someone, realized it's only cost 50 bucks to break into someone's car, like to get a kit to break into someone's car, which is crazy. Um, and this guy told me exactly where to buy the kit, and I said, okay, I bought the kit, now I'm going to start doing that for people. Actually, my friend still does that business. He's been doing it for 10 years, about, which is pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so I'd always been kind of tinkering, um, and I didn't really realize what I was doing, but I was kind of figuring out, like, hey, this is something I like doing. Um, all right, when I go to college, what do I, what do I kind of end up wrong way? When I go to college, kind of what do I end up thinking? So I went to the University of Oregon. Um, there I studied uh, communication studies and got a minor in digital arts. And I think um, for me at the time, it was really like, I tried a bunch of different majors out and everything, but at the time for me, what I really liked about this and what intrigued me was, okay, hey, this was like the place that we were talking about and critically thinking about at the time, you know, Facebook, Twitter, these different things that were coming out and, and saying, okay, what's the impact that these products are going to have? That was kind of exciting to me, and I think that that um, really planted like a strong seed for this this path that I kind of ended up going on. And one of the things I did was right after that, I started a company called Wall Shops. What Wall Shops was was if you remember the, the site Stumble Upon, hit next and it takes you to a random website. It's kind of Stumble Upon things. So we built a Stumble Upon for shopping, okay? And the concept was you could next through and see sunglasses from all your stores or just random things, look through dresses, look through pants. Um, and I didn't, again, know what I was doing, but I wrote, you know, a piece of paper that said this is what it should be like. I worked with a friend to make it. I then put it out there, uh, launched it, asked people about what they thought of it, you know, little things like that along the way. Um, and, you know, started understanding, like, oh, well, how can we make this better? Well, what if we, what if we looked at the data from, you know, our, what our website's going through? Didn't really know what I was doing yet. And then had an opportunity where uh, Westfield Labs came to me and my two other uh, co-founders said, hey, like, we'd like to work with you. And we realized that we didn't really know what we were doing. And it was very hard to describe and to scale that. Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, we didn't really know how to scale that, right? And I, I kind of at the opportunity and thinking it through, we were saying, OK, well, maybe I should like take a big step back here and try to like, go get educated about what I'm doing and learn, learn about that a little bit. Keep thinking the up arrow would be next, but it's really not, guys. Okay, so one thing at the time I started thinking about was, okay, who are people doing things that I want to be doing? And how do I see what they were doing before they were doing the thing that I was doing, right? 
So what I saw, I, I went to a ton of different CEOs and founders uh, LinkedIn profiles, because it's 2018. Well, I guess at the time it wasn't 2018, but we had this thing where you can actually really see what people were doing in their life, right? People talk about it. You go to events like this, they tell you what they were doing, which is fantastic. Um, and you can see, like, this is the jobs that people are doing. So I kind of did some research. I looked around. What I learned was that, like, Kevin Sistrom, right before that he was uh, started Instagram, he was a product manager at, travel, at, a, at a, a travel website called Next Stop. You look at that, like, the Asana founder was a product manager early. Steve Jobs was a product manager at Atari. Like, you look around at all of these different things, and I said, okay, this is kind of seems, but I didn't know why that was. Why like, is this thing? Um, and so the next, the next thing that I did um, was really thought through and said, okay, how do I, how do I learn more about this thing? So I, I kind of did, I, I, I kind of pounded the pavement a bit and said, started talking to anyone who would talk to me and say, hey, how, what does a product manager do? Tell me these questions, things like that. And one of the people I met was this guy, after a sea of people I reached out to, a guy that's pretty influential in the product management space was a guy named Josh Hellman, um, who's a VC at, I think actually he's a VP of product at Robinhood, the trading app right now. And um, just said, hey, um, I'm, you know, have done these kind of things. I'm kind of trying to find my way here. Um, I'd love to chat with you about product management. Something very sim uh, simple. Um, and I think I didn't get a response. Tweeted him. He tweeted me back and said, hey, email me again. We'll figure it out. Didn't get a response. Emailed again. <laughs> Three days later, emailed again. And then said, hey, hit up my assistant. Let's talk together. We're going to find a time. Talked. Been very helpful, right? Um, and one of the things that uh, he told me to do is read a book called Venture Deals uh, by Brad Feld and Jason Mendelson. And this book was, I asked the question, how do I learn about VCs? How do I learn about like companies? How do I learn about being funded? Things like that. One of the things he talked about was this book. I think this is an important thing, is that, and this wasn't just the only story like this that I kind of had at this time, but when he recommended this book, what I tried to do is I tried to read it in the next two days. And I can say, because he said, hey, read this book and ask me if you have any questions. I think that's a really important piece here, because, um, and I'll get into why I think that is even more here in a bit, but um, I read the book, came back with the questions, and, and kept talking with them. I think when someone gives you an opportunity like that, it's important to actually um, jump on it. And I think that actually it's a very important trait for PMs, uh, where we want to be very curious we want to listen to what people are telling us, and we want to make the most of those opportunities and keep the conversation going, right? Um, and, and learn quickly, because I think perspective is everything as a PM, right? Um, the more data you have or the more information that you have, the better decisions that you can make, right? And I think that when someone is telling you, hey, this is a way, that you're, this is a path forward, sometimes it's good to li listen to it and um, interact with it. And that was a way that I was able to, I think, build a relationship. One of the advice that he gave me, was he said, hey, I said, how do I break into being a PM? He said, you know, a really good place to do this is go to like a, and I think it's actually the advice of product school um, as well, but it's like, hey, go to a company that has several products that need to be managed. It makes intuitive sense, right? Seeing some head nods, a little bit of smiles, some straight faces out there, it's good. Yeah. Um, but uh, I went and he said, hey, you know, gaming companies are a really great place to break into consumer product management in particular because um, they typically have a portfolio. They're managing multiple live titles. Um, there's things that are constantly being launched, operated, and then sunset, and then launched again. Um, games have a, like a smaller shelf life. Um, some games are, can be profitable and only be around like two years. It's also like a trend of entertainment products, right? A song, we listen to it all the time when it comes out, and then we don't listen to it anymore because we get tired. That's how entertainment works. Um, and said, so, hey, go there go seek out a gaming company. So I kind of went and did that. Um, and um, I'll talk about my about.me experience a, a little bit, but um, at, at the same time as that was going on, I was uh, working for a company, about.me, which is a where place where you can make a personal page about you, and uh, really got to go through that first experience and seeing what a product manager did, right? Um, and seeing the product manager at about.me creating, doing some analysis, creating a feature, working with engineers, and that was really kind of like a, a moment for me to solidify and say, hey, this is, this is something that's cool. Because all roads kind of lead to product. Whether it's marketing or engineering or whatever, there's a, you get to work with a lot of cross functional things. So I, I ended up pounding the pavement a bit and talked to a bunch of gaming companies. 
I ended up getting an opportunity to work at Plato as an associate product manager, um, and that was making uh, games. Um, and think of it as that was around the time that like Farmville was a thing. You remember that? Getting a bunch of requests from everyone, having TV shows named found it, everything like that. So, um, and that was really cool because at that time, um, I was able to, I'm going to get my notes out here, guys. At that time, I was able to pick up, I think, some really important skills um, that are that you should have as a PM. So number one for, for me was I picked up really good Excel skills, right? being able to ingest data, manipulate it, and come out with real answers. Another big thing was SQL. right? Um, ultimately, at, if we're software PMs, this is something that I really, I really truly believe and an advocate for for my teams and the people that work for me, is that like, as a software PM, what is the product that you're often managing? Often, yes, there's like some sort of consumer name for it or business name for it or whatever it is, but often it's a set of tables, right? Instead of data uh, tables that we are now creating an interface for to allow our consumers to read and write to that, right? Every web product is that way for the most part, um, especially in, in, the, in the consumer world. And SQL is a language that allows you to manipulate that data and understand how users are being presented with it and do a lot of analysis um, and really understand what is happening when our consumers are going through it. So that was a big one. Another big one was um, spec writing, right? So it's being able to clearly write out a, a document that explains, hey, this is the opportunity we're going after. Here's the business case behind it. Here's the mock-ups that show the opportunity. And here's kind of like a little you know, a spec for us to build. The other thing was creating mockups, right? So even just drawing pictures and being able to explain the vision that you have based off of the analysis you've done. Um, and lastly, kind of this next piece, which is presenting, hey, and, and aligning people around a particular idea or topic, right? So we align people around with a, with a bit of data, with some mockups, and we say, this is the opportunity, this is the thing we need to build, and presenting that, right, to a group of people and having everyone come out of that meeting going, Oh yeah, like I agree with it. Or soliciting their feedback and making the idea even better, which is I think another mark of a really big PM. Um, cool. So um, Playdump got bought by Disney, uh, and in like 2010, uh, which was presented some other interesting opportunities for me. I got to um, go PM the first uh, internally developed Star Wars video game that they made. Um, which was cool. It was called Star Wars Commander. It's kind of like a Star Wars Clash of Clans, if you remember that. Um, which was an awesome, awesome project. Got to be in like the first five people working on it um, and built the team up to like 65 people. Got to work with a lot of different PMs, engineers. Got to go through that cycle of launching something, doing analysis. And that's like what I would say is one of the most valuable parts that you can be in in your career is going to be times where you're launching new things when you have a hypothesis you launch something new, and you're actually getting the data back, right? I think sometimes, I think people can, and it depends on what type of organization you're in and what type of work you're doing, but as a PM, sometimes people think it's just the getting requirements and building it part. But really, it's that next piece of understanding how did it perform against the goals, right? Because um, that's what makes it a product. If it doesn't do anything, it's not a product. It's just a... I don't know, a piece of content or something, right? We wanted to actively make someone do a different behavior or help someone do something, right? And most of the time when we're building something, we have that in mind, right? Um, so I got to work on that. Another thing that happened, which was really good timing, was Disney bought this other company called uh, Maker Studios, which uh, the best way to describe that is it's an um, infrastructure for like YouTube stars or celebrities or whatever. Um, they help them monetize their content through these kind of bigger um, syndicating of their content deals, as well as help them kind of grow their program. Um, and I got to uh, lead a project um, that was taking a lot of the makers' content creation and putting it directly in any direct consumer app that Disney has. Right? So people would maybe do like a Let's Play video of our game. Well, instead of that content being viewed on YouTube, what if that content could be viewed in game? It was fun. Um, all good things. Around that time, um, I was kind of in a place in my career where I had been doing some product development. I picked up these PM skills, 
Um, I kind of put my nose to the grindstone, really got good at analytics, right? Really got good at uh, product design and spec writing, some of those skills we talked about. Really good at going into a room and aligning people using those uh, tools uh, to build things and to be able to honestly say, hey, this was good, this was bad, right? And was kind of at a point, and this is, I think, an important way to view your career at any time, um, but you ask yourself, okay, well, what am I getting out of this opportunity? Or what can I give to a company? I think there's like three real things. One, you have your time, right? Um, and I think that you have like money that you can like give to things and you can invest in things. And I think the other big one is risk tolerance, right? Um, risk tolerance is something where like if you were to like go and talk to someone and say, I want to retire or something like that and go into an office where someone's gonna like get you like financial products help you retire, first question they're gonna ask you is, what's your risk tolerance? Okay? And they're gonna say, if you have a really risk tolerance, like go do really risky stuff. If you have a high risk tolerance, go do risky stuff. If you have low, low risk tolerance, go do conservative stuff. And I was kind of saying, hey, for me, like at Disney, yes, I have a good like product development thing, but I'm not really using that risk tolerance to go out there. Um, I'm not launching things as fast as I want. If I really want to really get good at being a PM, I know that launching stuff is going to be helpful because that's going to help me, one, refine my execution skills. Number two, it's going to help me learn how customers behave when I give them a certain software experience. Um, guy that sold Play-Doh came to me and said, hey Patrick, um, we're starting this company called Green Chef. It's like Blue Apron, but we're gonna make it organic, so it's gonna be like Whole Foods version of this whole thing. Um, gave me like the little pitch on it and said, hey, we have an opportunity for you to lead product there. Um, and I got to work um, there build a product team from the ground up, manage the consumer, um, whole consumer experience, work on a little of the physical product stuff, um, which is an interesting um, piece, because I think that, and this was a big moment, because I think for anyone in their career, and you probably have done this if you've worked in enough places, whenever you get a chance to work in a new industry, even within the same company or a new team, you always gain a lot of perspective. Or you're getting another data point for yourself. And this was, uh, uh, a great opportunity because this is where I felt like I really got to learn. Hey, there's not just one. There's not just one way to manage a product, right? There's not really like oftentimes we all ask this question. I think this is why a lot of us are here. Is like how do I become a product manager, or what do I? What are the steps that I go to do that? When you learn and when you work at a lot of companies, is that they might call it a product manager at each company. There's a little bit different flavor, right? And I think that ultimately that's where you go and you find out what works for you, right? Um, and you want to go see like, hey, what's that type of what's that type of work that I want to be going doing, and seeing how I jive with different people. You know, oftentimes there's PM work that is more about execution based. There's PM work that can be way more analytical. There's PM that can be way more design focused. It really depends on what business you're working on. I think that that's a really important lesson um, when we are in pursuit of being product manager. Is that it's oftentimes we want to optimize our skill set around the business that we're working for, the product that we're managing, right? So if it's a consumer product that has millions of people on it, being able to talk to customers and uh, pull data and analyze that data into meaningful insights that we can turn into features and opportunities, hugely important, right? If we're working in a more B2B environment, being able to talk to our sales and our customer service team and align stakeholders internally into what our customers want, very, very much more valuable than being able to run a lot of SQL queries because you don't have a lot of users, right? A little bit different, right? If you're at a um, very early stage company where you don't have any data, being a design-focused PM is a way, way more valuable, right? And I think optimizing, understanding what's good for the business is going to oftentimes going to enhance or give you a, um, a clearer picture or a clearer path to being the PM that you would be. Um, so at Green Chef, I got to really, I felt like, learn that lesson and take this company from a Series A business to when we had this like weird broccoli slash t-shirt slash chef hat with two fonts logo um, that was designed from a designer with like a couple hundred bucks to the Green Chef logo you see today. And then um, back in March 2018, this year, we were acquired by HelloFresh um, to further uh, get our product to, to more people and to uh, provide our offering to HelloFresh customers as well. Um, and um, that's where I'm at today, guys. <laughs> All sorts of fun stuff. Um, 
So that's a little bit about my background. Kind of can tell you kind of some of the things that I've worked on, and um, I'm really stoked to talk to you about different questions that you might have, or different things you're working on, or different things you're thinking about, and uh, make it a fun discussion. Um, What's your name? Ronnie. Ronnie. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so when you started your first PM role, um, there's obviously a learning curve and you're learning a lot of things. Can you talk a little bit about you know, how you approached that first role yeah. and like, things that helped you kind of get up to speed and like, still add value to mm -hmm. the team? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a good question. Um, the the thing that people often have told me before that I think is a good analogy, some of you might have heard, is like drinking through, like, it's like drinking through a fire hose. Right? It's a lot being thrown at you. Um, and for that first role, I think it was really um, being willing to really listen to the people around me and ask lots of questions um, and really take advantage of the resources that you have. So like an example was um, I was working on a feature and I wrote up the spec. It was like my first spec. I was like, all right, I wrote the thing. I think that it tells people what to do. Um, I went into a room with you know, an engineer, designers kind of explaining it, and I saw kind of our engineer taking a lot of notes. And I was like, okay. And that designer like taking a lot of notes. And I was like, they were asking questions, writing other things down. I was like, how do I make my spec the things that you're writing down right now? Right? Mm -hmm. um, and really talking to them in depth and maybe being able to have that deeper conversation and saying, hey, well, what are the things that are going to help you do that? Um, and bake those in. I think the more that you're willing to go and talk with people and ask them and, and say, hey, how do you think about this? How do you do this? Um, as opposed to, and, and then following up on the things that they say for you to do. It's a way that you can get a more focused, uh, you can get more focus out of the energy that you're putting in as opposed to if you're just grinding over and over and over. It's another thing that you can take your boss and say, hey, I already talked to these people. This is what we're going to do. I'm doing this thing actively for them. Um, and I think that cycle can really help things out. Um, another really big thing that I think that I got advice from my boss at that time, of just being able to make sure, again, you're, you're encouraging feedback from people. Um, because that's how we learn, right? Whenever we're doing something else for the first time, it's good to have a good teacher. Um, but if you're just being thrown into the fire, you need to be getting feedback on what you're doing. And so a big like just hack for me was after a meeting that I ran or after a meeting that I presented in, I'd just ping a few people and say, hey, how'd that go? How could that be better? Right? And it's not a lot of effort on your part to send that message. Um, but oftentimes, like in this area, we work with a lot of thoughtful people that care about their work that have a lot of experience. And um, I think it's always good to get really good feedback. And at the end of the day, I think we don't look for people to tell us what to do, but we look for people to give us as much information as possible and then make the decision that we think is best so that we can be accountable to it and then get better the next time. So I'd say that just really take the time to, I think, taking the time to talk to people and being curious about the work they're doing um, and doing these little, these little hacks of just asking for feedback and saying, hey guys, what did you think of that? Um, and hearing it, and then maybe changing it. Like if someone says, hey, I think the spec could have been more efficient here. Next spec, if you do that, that's good, right? And I think you'll learn over time uh, what those things are. Um, another thing I think that was good was just I really kind of put the nose of the grindstone on learning SQL, which was helpful, and that speeds things up. And I would say that where, whatever the business that you're working for, whatever the way that they collect data to make decisions, not being able to have to rely on other people to get that data can drastically speed up your uh, ability to learn. And I think thinking of it, again, as a function of how can I learn fastest, right, is how can I go through, and, and we, can, we know how learning works. Learning works as we look at a problem, we set a set of goals, we say a hypothesis of what we think might happen, and then we go take something to market, we then see and we look back and say, did it accomplish the thing? How close was I to my hypothesis? The more that you can do that, even in your own work, and kind of run yourself kind of like a product, the better I think you're going to, or the faster that you're going to, to move, right? So 
Um, whether your company gets a lot of decision-making data from finance or if it comes from you know, in looking at different Excel models, get good at Excel modeling, right? Um, if it's pulling SQL queries to do your own analysis, get good at that. If it's talking to customers, go talk to customers. Because ultimately, there's going to be some sort of KPI or metric or customer that you're responsible for, and you're going to want to bring the best uh, data to that to make decisions. And if you're constantly having to like, go ask someone and then wait on them, that's fine, and we want to be respectful of you know, our limitations, but I would encourage you to double down and learn those skills. Um, and that'll, that'll speed you up. Yeah, that was great. Great? Thank okay, cool. I'm sorry, I missed the... Sorry. Yeah, go for it, please. So I missed the, you know, I think the first couple of minutes of the sure. presentation. So what was your background before you sort of decided that you wanted to switch to PM? And when you were applying for PM loans, how did you set this up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can kind of talk about that. So briefly, uh, I um, really started from, I started several little tiny little projects and companies. Um, and I uh, was working on a, a, a company at the time and kind of became a little bit like, oh wow, like, I don't really know how to scalably long, like, manage a product like this. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, the way I kind of found it was I looked at different uh, people that had started companies and said, well, what, what, what do these people do? How do they learn how to do this? And they only learned how to do it by being a product manager for several years, going through the cycle of learning, right? Um, so how did I sell myself as a product manager is a really good question. You know, I think that your story is always very important. And that's why I always say, like, don't look at the thing that you want. Like, you need to set up the context for that moment. Oftentimes, is a much more efficient approach. That's why, and then one of the things I said earlier is, look at the people doing the thing you want to do, and then look at what they did the last three years before that, right? So that's the thing that I would encourage, is like, as you go talk to other PMs, or talk to PMs of your company, Ask them what they were doing before that. So good question. Um, so I did that. And um, I think the real way that I, I like sold myself was saying, like, hey guys, like, you know, I'm um, i here's what I've done, right? I've been working on these different projects. Um, I've been doing these different things at my company that have been very cross-functional, been very focused on this. You know, I'm in pursuit of you know opportunity where I can continue to grow on this. Um, I uh, am and I'm looking for someone that can help me do that, right? And I think that that's an important kind of way to like, for me at least, was to frame it. Is that it's like it's not like, like I have I have a lot of value, I have a lot of energy that I'm going to bring, and I'm looking for the best place to do this. And I think that you might be the best place to do this, right? And that's what I think for me like the, the platum. Uh, when I remember talking to the guy, also super random story. This is also a real a total taking a step back here. Tell people what you want in life. Like, once you figure out what you want, like what you want to do, like if you all want to be product managers, tell people you want to be a product manager. Because I think oftentimes if we tell people what we want, now we know, other people know what we're looking for and can help us. And uh, back at that time, this is really crazy, I went to a hackathon, so I thought that was like a fun thing to do, and it is. It's a cool place to like go, pitch an idea, and like kind of work with some people to make stuff. I'm a big proponent of it. I did that, and I met a guy that was going to be like was way younger than me. Was attending Stanford. Was like this. I don't know if anyone's met these people that are out here, but like they're like 17 years old, and they like can build an app like in a second. And it's like poof, um, and they're like going to like some really smart school and all that stuff. Um, and I met this guy that was like that, and I I remember we went to like a movie or something. It was like oh, okay, this is fun. We like hung out. Let's go to a movie or something. He invited someone. And I just like told people like, hey, like I'm looking for product management work. Like if you know someone, like I'd love to like get lunch with anyone that you know that's a product manager. And he was like, yeah. So he was like an intern at like some company, Plato. Mm -hmm. His intern, Plato. And he ended up introducing me to the VP of product through an email. And the guy was like, yeah, I'll get lunch with you. Got lunch with him. Said, hey. Ooh. Yeah. I was like, hey, I'm this guy. <laughs> I've done these things. I'm looking for a place. This person told me gaming companies is the best place to learn PM. That's why I'm here. What do you want from me? <laughs> right? I think that it's about how do you build that story for yourself and saying, like, we all have reasons why we want to do it. It's about just, I think, articulating it very clearly. Um, so that was, like, my cell. Um, and I think the key thing is that every single person is a different cell. Right? Every single person you talk to, 
you should look, take the effort to learn about, hey, what are the ways that we might be able to talk or, you know, what are stories that they might have, right? Um, which I think is good. And if you have people that you want to talk to and you're not sure how you should talk to them, talk to me and I'll talk to you, talk to you then. Cool. Um, question. So it's kind of related combined to two of them. Mine is a little more specific to yeah. projects. Love um, specific. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to work as a, a going down to product management. You now I'm collecting on a project and work on the side. So I have this guy working on his own project, um, which is like a VR language learning program. Um, nice. um, so it's like a puzzle game. You put on a goggle. Um, it's Chinese learning because his wife is Chinese, and then you just put on a couple of the characters like you pick and choose. But so like when the best way of learning uh, uh, language is that put you in the situation and then just directly learn the language instead of translating. Sure. So that's a really good model. And then it's like a new product coming up, and he's still doing that testing later age. So I, I volunteer, like, if I can help, I'm learning this project, what can I do? So for this new, like, it's fresh, like, even fresh to the new stuff. Love it. What can I do? I, I'm just like, oh, I don't know any of the VR. He's, like, a PhD doing, like, a data analysis, yes. like, all the way up. So Noah's very, very near. Yeah, Noah's thing. Not okay, important. how can you add value? How do I do it? Yes. Yeah, um, good question. How can I help? And then, like, marketing and all of that. Got it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What's your name? My name's Karen. Karen, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's okay. your name? Patrick. Patrick. Yes, I'm Patrick. <laughs> uh, Karen. Yeah. Okay, yes. So um, so it sounds like there's someone that's very technical that has an interesting product. You're helping them, and they have a focus that's more kind of engineering and design. Yes. And it's like, how do you prioritize your time? Right, and add the most value. Um, one thought here, or a couple thoughts. Number one, I think if you really boil down to so a lot of people ask the question, like, what does a product manager do? And they give lots of long blog post answers you know, about them. And then you're like, still left being like, I don't know what this thing does. Um, if I had to boil it down to like, one thing and like, one word, I would say what PMs do is they prioritize, period. Right? I think every skill that I told you that I think is important for a PM to have in your tool belt is it allows you to make better business decisions or make better decisions for your product. Right? Being able to visualize with a mock-up, being able, uh, being able to visualize with a mock-up helps us see, is this a good opportunity? Being able to go talk to customers helps us validate our hypothesis pre-launch of a product, right? Being able to pull data helps us run a business case and maybe market size things, right? So um, off the top of my head, if I had to prioritize one of those in the funnel based off what I know about the situation, is um, oftentimes it's developing that hypothesis and saying, okay, what, right, what is, so we're, we're building this product for a person that we think exists, right? So I would go try to talk to those people. And I would say, I want to go find 10, 20 of those people, right? And go talk to them and ask them a set of questions um, where I can learn what, how, are they, how are they currently solving this problem. Um, the important thing, I think, when you're calling customers or calling people is that, or you're talking to people, is you're rooting the discussion in what they did or what they have done, rather than what they think they want to do or what they would do. And the reason that is is because we want to be data driven. And data is inherently something that has happened. It's not something that we forecast out in the future necessarily. And so I would ask these people you know, a set of questions. You're know, probably something like, um, tell me about the last time you've tried to learn a language or whatever, or whatever the main goal of this app is, or this, this application. Tell me the last time you tried to learn a, uh, a, a language. Hear the story. Listen to what they say. You're probably and any time they say they hate something or they love something, that's like you should write that down. That's typically telling you something that they want the experience to be one way or they want the experience to be another way. The next question that after they tell you all about that, I would ask them, what's the hardest part about that? What's the hardest part about doing that? Right? Um, or yeah. And um, I would say, how do you currently solve the problem that's the hardest thing? So like, in this hypothetical application that I'm kind of running live right now, I would say something like, hey, how do you currently solve this problem? They're like, oh, I go to school. Oh, well, tell me about school. Well, school, they, the teacher comes in, they talk to me, it's actually like this, so whatever. And they're like, oh, well, I don't always have notes. Feature idea, right? Oh, like, 
What's the hardest part about this? Well, it's really hard to take notes and listen at the same time. Oh, how do you currently solve that? Oh, I currently solve that problem by like writing things down and listening, but I don't always check. Well, maybe like this, maybe now you can infer and come up with an opinion on how to solve that. That's a thing that you can bring to the table now and talk to it, your, your partner, right? So I would definitely say talking to customers and defining who we're going after is number one. Number two, I would really define a set of um, what are the product KPIs? KPIs stand for key performance indicators. If, we've all, if you've worked in a corporate environment, you probably know what KPI is. Um, if you haven't, it's called something else and you still have them. Um, but I would try to really understand what it is we think our product does, right? So is it like, and, and what are those key metrics? It's like, oh, we want someone to go through this session or complete a course, or we want someone to do X, Y, Z and understand all of those metrics. Um, because when you do create a feature, you want to know, like, is this feature helping us do this? It's a good way to help prioritize it, right? So I think pre-launch, pre I would talk to a lot of customers to find who that is, and I would just find like, a set of product KPIs um, to, to do that. I think those are really strong ways. So KPIs yeah. in this case could be how much time would, you would take otherwise and what this part actually Yeah, so like I think you start with what you've got. So it depends on how, if you have like strong mockups that are currently being worked on, so you can kind of come up, you can see, okay, what does this product do? It's like, okay, it gives me a lesson. You want people to like next through the lesson or complete a quiz or something like that. Eventually they end it, whatever it is. I don't know, I'm just making up this interface in my head. But um, if you are at that stage with a product and there's something you can visualize and there's a real like, here's what we want people to do, Boiling that down into saying, like, these are the clear uh, ways that we are going to measure success. We are going to measure success. Like, this is a successful product when this person can go through this flow and they complete these things. And we're going to want them to come back regularly and can complete that. So, like, I'll give you an example from my career of, like, how this was helpful pre-launching. Pre okay, so Star Wars Commander. Star Wars Commander was this big, you know, Clash of Clans style game. And you, a big question in our mind was, well, like, how much content should we launch with? So in this type of a game, you get a, like, a headquarters, and all your content is blocked. Like, if you get your headquarters to level 2, you can get level 2 buildings and units. You upgrade them, right? You get level 3, you get level 3 stuff. Level 4, you unlock stuff, right? So if, you want, if we launch, should we... You're like all the way to level five, all the way to level ten. What's the right amount of content? And um, you know, at that time, uh, you know, we said, "Hey, uh, how are we? Like, why is that important to us? Right? We can evaluate that, right? And we just kind of went through a simple thought exercise, which was like, "Oh, well." If we believe, right, if the only way that people can pay us money, right, which is valuable to us, obviously, is going through these flows, like, if we just have one of these levels and people can blow through these in a week, and we can't do an app update for another three, four weeks or something like that, well, then that's going to be three weeks, hypothetically, that people aren't going to be able to spend money. Like, our best customers that have spent all of our money and paid all the way through aren't going to be able to spend this money, right? So we timed it and said, okay, we think right now that five levels will take people about 10 weeks, and we think we'll have our next app update by around eight weeks. So that gives people a chance to never feel like they're blocked and constantly be spending. Right? That wasn't, we didn't need data for that, but we were able to walk through and create the model that says, okay, where, is the, where are the most valuable metrics coming from, and is there a way that we can you know, prioritize and make these decisions? Um, if you want to talk more about the product and talk about those product APIs, I'm willing to talk to that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Fun stuff. Yeah. Kind of riveting, <laughs> riveting stuff at 710 in Santa Clara, right? <laughs> cool. Other other thoughts, questions, so, stories? Cool. Yeah. Oh, so uh, regarding her question before, yeah. uh, she was asking, what's your background? So I, I guess it's like, what kind of uh, major were you studying at? Um, because I'm an engineer background, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to like transfer from an engineer to a product manager. 
because I right now I haven't got a like MBA degree. Sure. Um. So that I don't have an MBA either. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. So like, what were you do? Is 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 it also an engineer or like business or marketing background? I mean, the best way to describe it, say what I was doing, is probably like, yeah, different like business operations and marketing, mm -hmm. um, and probably a little bit of data science. Um, and um, but to answer your question specifically about like. Uh, engineering manager, like how do you make that switch? Um, the exercise that I, and, and this is something that's come up the last couple of times I've talked. Um, I had some people in my class that were doing something similar. I think the way we approached it is saying, okay, well, what, first of all, I think it's always going to say, well, what, what opportunities do we want? Like, can we go find certain product management jobs? Maybe it's internally at your company, but can we find and say, what a, what's a job that we think that would be fun to have, right? And that can be at anywhere, right? And we do a search and we give ourselves a target. It's important to have targets because if we don't have a target, where are we going, right? One of the big things for me that I spent a lot of time is that if you look at product manager job descriptions, they'll tell you you need these skills, right? And what I did is I spent time looking at that and said, okay, the skills that you need to be a PM are you need to be able to pull data, right? You need to be able to, wherever that is, whether it's through SQL, whether it's through talking to people, whether it's through whatever pipeline it is that you have at your, that, that business, you need to be able to visualize your ideas, you need to be able to write specs, you need to be able to present on data and present on specs to align people, right? And you need to be able to go through that, this, the, what people call like a product cycle, which is you, an idea comes from anywhere, you analyze it, put a business case around it, you prioritize it, say it's the most important thing. You create a spec, right? You create a you know a sheet that align, you align people, you align a product, a designer, an engineer, whoever you need to build it. We then work through some sort of project management system or whatever that is to build this stuff, right? Um, we get designs, we get engineers to work on things. We then come up with like a go-to-market strategy. We launch. We then look and we analyze it against the goals of the reason why, whatever our business case was, right? We analyze it and we say, did this do the thing, did it not do the thing and why, right? So I would then ask you to say, okay, well, what are the pieces that I know about? What are the pieces that I don't know about, right? As an engineer, you probably know a lot about the cycle of working with design and working with product and engineering to build something. Like managing development is probably something that you're like, I know about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I would then ask you to probably do like an assessment of some of those other parts of that product cycle and say, well, do I know business cases, right? Or do I know how to like pull data, right? And I would try to prioritize what are those areas that you feel like you would need to improve, and I would start. I would start on those, right? I, I think we we have to have a target, come up with a list of things that we need to do and then start knocking them out, right? And I think that um, that's a really strong approach because I think that if someone was coming from more of like, let's say, a business development background, they probably would know a little bit more about business cases, wouldn't know anything about managing development. And I think that whatever that thing is that you already know a lot about in terms of the process, right? Like, uh, feel good about that. And be like, I know about this. Don't like undersell yourself and say, I have no experience. Like, no, you have a lot of experience. You have a lot of relevant experience from a really important part of this, this thing. Um, and um, I would start there. And then I would look for opportunities that are looking for people that know a lot about that particular topic. Um, that's, that's, I think that's where I'd start. I think that there's other interesting things that you could look at and say, well, what industry expertise do I know, right? Part of the reason that I started a consumer was because as at, at the point in my career that I was at, I really didn't have any B2B experience whatsoever, right? I didn't know like how a sales cycle worked by selling like some sort of like cloud software to someone. I said no insight into that. But I did have insight into playing games, right? I did have insight into using social networks. I did have insight into using different consumer products. Um, and I spent time like analyzing them also, right? Like back to your question around how I kind of sold myself. Another thing that I've done is that like I would encourage you to do is like come up with feature ideas for places you want to work, right? It's always an interesting thing to bring to the table. Like do the 
There's nothing stopping you from doing PM work right now, right? Picking an app that you like, saying there's something wrong with it, asking people about it, coming up with a hypothesis, making a spec, drawing a picture and saying this is what it could be. That's pretty cool. And any time that I've ever in my career had someone come to like a PM that's trying to get onto my team, come to me and show me that, either one, I've been able to say, like, you're on the right track, or two, I've been able to say, you're not on the right track, and here's how I can help you. But I know that it's worth it because they're putting in the effort. And so I think that, again, starting with a target, doing an assessment of where we're at, prioritizing what the thing we want to learn, and go do it. Thank you. Oh, and actually, I have a second question. Let's do it. Uh, so, as a PM, uh, how broad is your job market? So, um, like, if you are in currently in a consumer industry, yeah. Or how about you switch to a software or like hardware company? Yeah. So how how is it possible to like, switch in between? Like, um, if you are working in a like hardware company, will you? Um, can only work in this kind of company afterwards, yeah. or you can easily switch to a like software company. Uh, you know, I would probably say I think only feels a bit more rigid than than this life, ex this world experiences for all of us, right? Like, I think that at the end of the day, any any there's no like now you can't do this. Like, there's no like person at a company that's saying like like this is not like there's not it's not like a automatic no or anything like that. Um, I think it's about, again, building that case for yourself, right? I think, first of all, to convince anyone of anything, you have to convince yourself first. And I think the way you do that is by systematically, again, like another thing that I kind of tell my PMs often is, like, how do you turn this into a math problem, right? How do you make this a finite thing where you say, like, if I do this, I expect X, Y, Z results at the other side of it? So I think that, you know, if you were to be making the transition from like a hardware company to like a software company, for example, you have to say like, okay, well like, which parts of this job is the same, right? And which parts of it are different? And how do I learn the things that I need to know that are different? And how expensive is that for me to learn the things that I need to know is different? How long does it take? And does that align with my goals? It's a very simple way of looking at it, right? Um, so I think that oftentimes, if you have this strong set of skills as a PM, right, of being able to analytically look at a problem, pull your own data, turn that into an opportunity, prioritize it against a set of other opportunities, right, draw a picture to align people or make a spec, right, manage development, do those things, that is translatable to other places, right? Um, so I think that that's one approach, right? It's like I have these skill sets that are similar, and so it's like I could probably go step in and be a B two B product manager right now, just by applying those skills because I can I can learn in that cycle. That said, it is helpful if you have like certain like a category experience. Vice versa, that's also true. So if you have category experience in like a particular vertical, that's really valuable. I can teach you the PM skills, but I can't necessarily like teach you those category things is fast. Um, and, and really how that translates often, uh, and another thing that I would say to do is like, one of the most valuable things that you can do while you're at the company you are is learn what are the results of the projects that you're working on. Like that's something that I think makes, like I've always paid attention and always helped me, is like I can tell you what I think, what, what are push notification rates in a consumer app. I can tell you what like transaction email rates are because I've done that several times. And I think mo most of your company is probably producing some sort of interesting data or test. And I think asking those and learning those is always a good place to start as well. Um, so yes, I think it's possible, right? Um, and I think it's about just breaking it down and saying very clearly, what are the things that I am missing? And then going after those. Because this, at the end of the day, every single person, no one ever had all the experience ever before they started doing something. No one, right? If you read, like, I'm, like, really into listening to those podcasts where it's, like, about someone starting something, like how I built this NPR podcast, really fun. Um, and what you learn from anyone that started anything is it started because they had one piece of it that they, like, latched onto and everything else they had to figure out, <laughs> right? Um, so I don't think, I think that there's a certain element to any of this where it's about just being self-aware, convincing yourself, here's the path I need to take, putting yourself on that path, 
checking in, making sure you're still going there, finding good people to talk to, give you feedback. Um, and I think, you know, not, not in too long a time, you're there. Okay, thank you.